Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss UFOs. Okay, I got you. Not the ones with aliens. In this case, UFOs actually refer to a really intriguing type of a galaxy that was only discovered a few years back. And in this case, UFO stands for Ultra Red Flattened Object, and only discovered by the James Webb Space Telescope. And so essentially, we're going to be discussing yet another unusual mysterious type of a galaxy uncovered by the James Webb. But I guess here, let's start with the actual picture, which kind of explains why they're called UFOs. And so here we have the observations from the Hubble Space Telescope that basically reveal nothing, and the much more recent observations from the James Webb that suddenly reveal an unusual red flattened object that also kind of resembles a saucer which is why almost right away many astronomers started to refer to them as UFOs. And this wasn't just like one or two galaxies, a huge amount of them was actually discovered all over the place, all completely invisible to the Hubble Space Telescope, but then suddenly appearing as these really bright red objects to the James Webb. Here's a bunch more examples from just the last few months, basically showing you the same phenomenon over and over. And naturally this was a huge surprise. Not only was it difficult to explain what's really happening here, it also created a bit of a problem for the previous assumptions in regards to the number of galaxies in certain regions of the universe. Because here this meant that even in the much older universe, even though we actually expected nothing to exist there, there was a bunch of invisible galaxies that were previously completely ignored. And in this case, they all seem to be kind of similar. All of them were somewhat large, and usually spatially extended or basically stretched, but all extremely red and predominantly visible in the infrared, almost completely invisible to a regular telescope. And even for the scientists using the James Webb, this was a huge surprise. Because here the assumption was that, since James Webb is able to see much farther away, we're only going to be discovering new galaxies at these super extreme distances, which naturally it's also discovered. But in this case, nobody thought we would find galaxies much, much closer to us when the universe was already three and a half billion years old. And so here we had these massive red galaxies suddenly appearing out of nowhere. And like I mentioned, a lot of them, way more than anyone expected. And here's how they compare to a typical galaxy visible at a similar distance. And the first discovery was reported in this study from the August of 2022. And so here Erica Nelson and her team basically discovered all of these galaxies completely by accident. But back then they were just referred to as HST dark galaxies, or essentially galaxies invisible to the Hubble Space Telescope. But unofficially, everyone called them UFOs. And in most cases they were not that far away. The redshift here was about 2 to 6, so basically when the universe was anywhere from 1 billion to approximately 4 billion years old, with the first analysis revealing that basically they were just galaxies covered by a huge amount of dust, with this dust blocking most of the light and only allowing infrared light through. So essentially here we were just looking at very very red, very dark galaxies, or I guess more like huge dust clouds resembling galactic shapes. But to the infrared observations from the James Webb Space Telescope, these galaxies were extremely bright. They basically stood out right away and were visible in practically every single image, with all of them revealing very similar features. All of them were kind of similar in mass to the Milky Way galaxy, so already quite massive and quite developed, but all undergoing huge amounts of starburst activity, forming approximately 1000 times more stars than the Milky Way, potentially representing some of the most starbursty galaxies during this time, basically producing most stars during the first few billions of years, but also, for some reason, covered in dust. And like, a lot of dust. Up to a hundred times more than in a galaxy like the Milky Way. And while at first it was assumed that maybe these are actually progenitors to some of the most massive elliptical galaxies, such as the famous M87. Even today we still have no idea how a lot of these galaxies formed, and why many of them are so ridiculously massive and are also shaped in such a weird way. But this was just an assumption based on the amount of stars these galaxies were forming. But now, after two and a half years, we have an additional study from a similar team by Justice Gibson and Erica Nelson that basically analyzed these galaxies even more, making some additional discoveries. And so here, first of all, by using what's known as the JATES collaboration, which stands for JWST Advanced Deep Extragalactic Survey, here once again they discovered quite a lot of these invisible objects, 
but out of 112 of them, 56, or basically half, were classified as UFOs. And in every single case, they all possessed extremely similar properties. First of all, obviously more dust than any other galaxy, basically so much dust that all of the light here is covered entirely, with only infrared getting through. Here they basically compare it to a kind of a sandstorm inside the galaxy, making it practically invisible to a typical telescope. But also a lot of them actually seem to be very similar in shape to the Milky Way galaxy. Many of them had disks, they also had central bulges, and many of them were quite developed, except that they were basically once again invisible. With the only real mystery here being that, for some reason, they all contained a huge amount of dust. But where exactly this dust came from, or what became of these galaxies in the last few billions of years, that's actually the mystery. Because in the modern universe, in the last few billions of years, we see nothing like this. It's as if all of these UFOs only appeared for a few billion years, and then transformed into something entirely different. So basically, one of the last UFOs potentially existed approximately 10 billion years ago. And here, once again, the existence of these galaxies was basically confirmed by looking at similar images from the Hubble Space Telescope and discovering nothing in the same location. Most galaxies were invisible, and only some showed just a little bit of red dust, which is basically what they would look like to us if we were to somehow see them in the night skies. They would just look like a very, very dark red cloud. But in this case, researchers also used computer simulations and modeling to try to understand what's inside these galaxies and what they look like in real life. And though most galaxies can be basically any shape, including irregular shapes, spherical or elliptical, for some reason UFO galaxies basically resembled the Milky Way. They were structured disks and were more or less flat. And because they all resemble typical spiral galaxies, once again, it's kind of unclear where all of this dust is from. Because if these were elliptical galaxies, there might have been some kind of an explanation, and even some kind of an evolutionary process that would eventually lead these galaxies to become galaxies like M87, really, really massive elliptical galaxies containing lots of stars and lots and lots of dust. Yet that's not really the case. Here we have these very typical disk galaxies that even contain a central bulge that also resemble a typical starburst galaxy, such as for example NGC 5248 that you see right here, except that this galaxy we see really well, and it does not have the dust. Yet UFOs are unique in that they do look very similar, but they're just super dusty. And in comparison, one of the dustiest nearby galaxies is what's known as the Sculptor Galaxy. It's about 13 million light years away from us, and it does contain a lot of dust lanes that actually hide many different stars and different clusters from typical telescopes, and that only become visible to specialized telescopes like the James Webb. In contrast, there is also this. This is a discovery from 2023, and once again by the James Webb, and is one of the earlier galaxies that existed 13 billion years ago. And here this is not a UFO, but it's an extremely active starburst galaxy, currently known as Aztec 71, that's also extremely rich in dust, and basically implies that these galaxies were just extremely common in the early universe. Which means that these dusty galaxies were very likely just a common occurrence during the first 3 billion years. But once again, the mystery here is, what exactly did they become? Did they actually turn into one of the spiral galaxies, eventually losing all of the dust? Or something more exotic? And I guess more specifically, where did all of this dust eventually go? Because here we're talking about galaxies containing hundreds of times more dust than a typical galaxy like the Milky Way. Getting rid of this dust and turning it into something is definitely not an easy process. And so the only solution here is to find some kind of an intermediate state, possibly 5 to 6 billion years ago, which can possibly show us the process that eventually turned these dusty galaxies into something more familiar. But at the moment, there's just no answer, and even after two years of observations, this is still a really big mystery. We have no idea what these galaxies became, or why they exist. But once someone proposes some kind of an explanation, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous discoveries from the James Webb in some of the videos in the description. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.